Okay, yes. So when I got out, I realized that I needed, I needed God. <clears throat> so we found a church in Tri-County, uh, me and Floyd, and then David with his wife and Debbie with her husband. We started going to church. And uh, we hadn't been going too long, but we were starting to come around. And then, you know, the children worked for us, of course. Uh, one Friday, um, we got a phone call at, in the morning. Our son had been killed in a car wreck. And um, so I, uh, I was at the layout, I remember screaming as loud as I could, God help me, please, God help me. And my friends told me that what amazed them was the pastor was right there from the church we were going to, and he didn't even come up to me or anything, and they thought that was kind of strange. But then we went to church on Sunday, and back then, like I said, I didn't have God, I didn't know anything, and I thought you had to be baptized to be saved. I thought that's what you had to do or you weren't saved. And so I wanted to make an appointment to get baptized. And they said, no, you're doing it for the wrong reason. You know, we can't do it. And uh, so I didn't know, so I got mad at them. And then I got mad at God. And I said, well, to me, I'm trying to get with God and He must not want me. You know, so I backslid again and then because of our difference in grieving I grieved one way Floyd grieved another way we did not grieve and they say 88% um, of couples will split for the loss of a child and so we split up again and then uh, three months later I developed breast cancer and so I still not had, didn't have God in my life. But after five surgeries and six weeks of radiation, five, day, uh, five days a week, six months of chemo, here I am standing today, 14 year cancer survivor. Amen. And that was God. See, God knows when you're born what all you're going to go through and what all you're going to do if we only knew, you know, but we don't. He wants to see how you're going to get through them. And they told me every time I went for a chemo treatment, I'd go in just smiling up a storm and they'd tell me that more of their patients, that was my attitude. Because I had a happy attitude and I knew I was going to whip it. So, he, I think did, God did that, give me a testimony. So then I went to Corbin, Kentucky. Why in the world I went to Corbin, Kentucky with a friend? And she was a great Christian, great Christian. So God knew what he was doing. And she got me going to church, and that's where I got saved, in the little church in Corbin, Kentucky. And so I knew then that, because I knew I could not afford to come back. I didn't know what to do. And, but after I got saved and was with the Lord, I had enough faith to know that if I come back, He's going to see that I make it, that I will do, I will get back. So I did come back. I lived, uh, when I came back, I jumped into an apartment that was way too expensive just to get back here. And there was days I didn't have nothing to eat. And, but I kept going. I started uh, looking. I had heard that uh, bingos had uh, were hiring people part time, and it was like under the table four hours a night. Uh, and I thought, well, maybe I can get on in a bingo. And but you had to know somebody because it was you know really considered easy money, even though to me it wouldn't have been because my pain was so bad. But I knew if God wanted me to do it, I could do it. So. I didn't get the job then, and I was barely making it. And by then, see, our daughter, Debbie, she used to have um, 
different Christmas, different Thanksgiving, different Easter, different birthday. And she said, no more, Mom. You and Dad are going to come here at the same time because I'm not having two Christmases and two Thanksgivings and all this. It's ridiculous. So we, we started going and we got where we would joke and laugh and talk to each other. And uh, it was Christmas time. And Debbie gave me a $50 Kroger gift certificate. And I cried and I cried and I cried. That meant so much to me. You know, you were here before, we were telling you all this money, and that $50 Kroger gift certificate could have been, I couldn't have got anything better for Christmas. And then uh, I was leaving, and Floyd hugged me, and he put a $50 bill in my pocket. Bear with me a second. <laughs> so after that, uh, my lease was up. I had been back a year, and I started looking for an apartment. And, and I found one $150 cheaper, but you had to have a $400 deposit. I didn't have one $400 deposit. So I asked Floyd, can you loan me $400? And I'm thinking, how are you going to pay it back? You know? but I'll figure out something, and he did. But he needed someone to clean his apartment. So I took the job. <laughs> <laughs> the only way, I knew, <laughs> only way I knew I could pay that money back was to clean his apartment, it was a mess. Because <laughs> he's only gonna give me $30, I thought. <laughs> you gotta be kidding with this mess, why didn't you get 100? <laughs> And so, you know, God started working with all these things happening. God's starting to work. And then, right after that, I got called from the Pino uh, because they had an opening for concession stand. And that's to clean and cook, and no one wanted it. So I took that. And so then I, uh, I started working the bingo, and that was giving me extra money, too. And I didn't know, because my pain was so bad. I've got uh, osteoporosis, fibromyalgia, and a disease called Sjogren's Syndrome, which is, you put them all together and it's so painful. Uh, but God, I knew God would help me. And he, he helped me get through it. I mean, it hurt, but I, I had to do what I had to do, and God was right behind me. And uh, so, so we, Floyd had um, three lots. We live at the lake. And he had three lots out there he had a camper on that he'd come out fishing on the weekends. And so we started looking for a uh, trailer to move out here. Because, you know, we live in Cincinnati. And uh, so we found one, a double wide that we liked. We had it built the way we wanted it and put on the land. We moved out here. And we, uh, I did keep my bingo jobs for a couple of years, but that was a long drive. I'd get off work at 10.30 and it takes till midnight to get home and Floyd was having a fit. And he said I didn't need to do that no more. And so we knew we had to find a church. We had to start going to church. So here's when all my, I, I'm done with my bad stuff because now comes the good stuff. <laughs> And I'm telling you, they're miracles. They're miracles. If uh, you're not a believer, when I get finished with my miracles, I think you will be. Um, we found our neighbor's uh, son was the pastor of the church out the lake. So we started going there. And we loved, we loved the Lord so much by then we would do anything for him. And then not long after starting to go there, I developed a tangerine size uh, tumor on my uterus. And a hospital in Cincinnati did all the tests and they said, you know, it is that big. 
And so, of course, I'm not going to believe them. So I go to Hillsboro. My doctor sent me over, did another test, said the same thing. And so then I got with a gynecologist in Wilmington, and she did a test, and she said, it has got to come out. So you've got three different cities, you know, and it is there. And they figured it was a it was cancerous. And they said it's gotta come out, it's gotta come out now. So everybody was praying, everybody was praying, and went to the hospital and Floyd said, of course I didn't know because they had put me out. Uh, fifteen minutes they came out and the doctor looked at him and said, It's a miracle, it's gone. There is no tumor. Yeah. It is gone, and he, he's like he is right now. Can you? And the doctor was totally dumbfounded. They don't want to admit, but she is a Christian, and she did know what happened. You know, they don't want to say God did it, but we know God did it. We know God did it. And our daughter, God had to put this in her heart. I'm going to read this. I'm almost done, Pastor. Keep going. <laughs> um, after tangerine-sized tumor left, my daughter wrote, To Mom, Lots of Love, Deb. It's called the Tangerine. It says, Think of a tangerine. Visualize, bright, orange in color, grown in the warm climate, a healthy food choice, yummy and good to eat. A doctor states that you have a tangerine-sized mass or tumor growing in your body. The tangerine suddenly turns ugly, not colorful, large, cold, and scary. Not at all good for you. God takes control of that tangerine. It's a miracle. It is once again fruitful, wholesome, and mm, good. When you have tasted a good tangerine, healthy choices will become a way of life. The tangerine tumor came as a gift with its uh, with a language all its own the language of the lord cannot be explained better than the true life experience of his presence god loves you amen i thought that was precious so there's well breast cancer so me be standing here but see back when i had it there was hardly no survivors so that was really miracle number one, even though I didn't have God. But he knew that he was going to use me as a testimony. And he's using me as a testimony with the uh, tumor gone. So I had, well, and then I'm going back a little in between. In 2002, I had a 50% blockage, and they put a stent in. In 2005, I had a life-threatening block, blockage to one of the main uh, arteries, and they put a stent in. And I've got a 90% blockage today that is not life-threatening, but the way it lays, they can't get a stent in it, but it's not life-threatening. They said it might give me a little trouble, but it's not. And so they put me on a blood thinner called Plavix. They could put me on Coumadin or some other ones, but no, they put me on Plavix. I had no idea. So I started, I took it up several years, maybe, maybe three, four years, and I started hemorrhaging. And it, it, it couldn't stop. It, I hemorrhaged at home nine hours before I let Floyd even take me to the hospital. So we got there, they couldn't stop it. Uh, they told him that they didn't think they could save me, that I was too weak for any kind of surgery, anything like that, totally too weak. And they just didn't think they could save me at all. Well, they air carried me to Wilmington and they didn't know what to do either. But the doctor in Highland District, which uh, he found this pill he tried and of course it wasn't working then he had only given me like one or two but Floyd told the doctor in Wilmington about that pill 
And so they had to give me 32 of them a day. But it did save my life stopping the hemorrhaging. But because of that, it put me into this horrible pain. They said uh, the pain is worse than uh, women having any kind of worse childbearing that you could possibly have. And I mean, I was trying to pull my hair out. I mean, it, it was horrible. So I had to go through that because to stop the bleeding where I could live. So they, uh, after 21 days and eight pints of blood later, they tried to tell me I had a tumor. And I said, I do not have a tumor. God has took that tumor away several years ago, and I do not have a tumor. And they was arguing with me. I said, well, I'm not. I'm not having no more of your tests. And they said, well, you might as well go home then. <laughs> Little did they know, Floyd was already on his way to get me, to take me home, because he had had enough of their, their tests. And he was on his way to get me. The Lord had already wiped out the tumor. So... God is so great. There's another miracle. They didn't think they could save me. I was going to die. And the Lord saved me again. Another testimony. And I'm not done yet. <laughs> then I have the hysterectomy. Because she couldn't do it until I got strong enough. She said six, seven months I had to get my strength back from the hemorrhage and uh, before she could even do a hysterectomy. So, you know, hysterectomy, you go, you have it, you're done. You go home the next day. I have seen women having them all the time. I've heard of it. And they said, nowadays, no problem. And so uh, I thought, I mean, I know you're going to have some pain when you have a full hysterectomy. And I thought that's what I was having. And I'm supposed to go home, you know, that next day. But um, the nurses said, uh, we've called your doctor, we don't think you're acting right, and we called your doctor, they're going to run a test. Thank God for that nurse, because otherwise I'd be dead again, but God had a good nurse in there. So they run the test, sure enough, I was bleeding internally, there was a leak. And so if they would have uh, sent me home, I would have died. So there's God again. He, there's another testimony. Mm -hmm. He saved me again. So he saved me for nights like tonight to share it with people. And do I? Oh, yes, I got some more. Mm -hmm. So. But before I go into my last testimony, uh, I'm going to go back to the church we were going to. Um, we had a Bible study in our home for a year and a half while we were there. And the more we learned about the Bible, the more you know, we learned uh, everything that, that everything's in the Bible is true. And if, it's, if they're not doing the Bible, you better get out of that church. And they're basically a good church, but they kind of believe that you get baptized to be saved and you come out of the water speaking in tongues. And if you don't speak in tongues, you're not saved. And that is not true. And so we knew, we knew we had to find a, another church. So we didn't know what to do. And then Floyd remembered when he was out here drinking <laughs> with his camper <laughs> that after a bunch of guys drinking all night, they decided they was going to church on Sunday. <laughs> so they went to a church cornerstone. And that was like 10 years before. And he said, well, let's find it. So we kept sort we found it. And we started going there, and the very first sermon that we heard from the pastor was exactly what was going on at the church, why we had to leave. And we said, well, the Lord sent us here because this is just, this is it. So we were happy for four months. <laughs> 
And then, oh no, another split. Uh, we said, now what are we going to do? But Marisha, pastor's wife, called and said, there's going to be a meeting in Jim and Julie's barn if you want to come. So, of course we went. And started the church right there in the barn with the portalette and bring your own chairs, gravel. I was doing children's church in Julie's basement, part of her basement, but there we were. And we stayed there three months, and then we found Dan and Diane, uh, their body shop. So we went from a barn to a body shop. We're moving up. <laughs> and then we started having fundraisers and things like that to earn money where we could buy our own place. And uh, so the Lord led us here. Perfect price that we could afford. And it's an old building, but it's got so much potential. And the upstairs is just as big as the downstairs, so we've got plenty of room to keep growing. And uh, we have a, uh, a very, very loving, dedicated congregation. The Lord sent us one of the most compassionate and loving pastors we could ever hope for. So if any of you are here maybe for the first time and you haven't heard the pastor speak, uh, do a sermon, you need to come in here because he's, he's great. And he's got a beautiful wife who supports him in everything he does and three beautiful children. So now, here I am again. I've got cancer again. I've got skin cancer. And I've got the malignant spreading kind that spreads throughout your body. And... Uh, I had a big tumor on my right hand. They operated on it, and uh, you can't even hardly see the scar. And tested, they got all of it. And then I had to go get a full body scan. They found it on my neck, some of my leg, my feet, uh, a few spots on my chest, and they froze them. And when they freeze them, you know, they pretty well are gone. They they had to freeze one two or three times, but it's fine. But then I developed one on this one. And they said that's very bad when it goes to the other hand. And they did a uh, biopsy. And then I was gonna have to go back and have the regular surgery. Well, they have to because it's cancer free. Amen. So there's another testimony. I mean, I just keep going from one that I don't know what all he's going to do. I, I don't have no more body parts to it. <laughs> <laughs> so. <laughs> and that's what I wrote here. I am going to have another testimony. Uh, I've got the verse uh, from a Bible. Oh. Yeah, I forgot about that part. <laughs> Anyone here at church knows I had all this cancer on my neck and my face. And you see it's all clear. Uh, I'm not telling you. <laughs> I'm not telling you. No, no. <laughs> I'm not. I wouldn't care. <laughs> The doctor ordered the special cream, which is very, it's not supposed to be used where it's supposed to be, I didn't think, but to put on my face, and it just cleared it right up. <laughs> so even though it's funny, it works. Amen. Bruce, you can't sleep like So, the verse in the Matthew 5, 4 says, Happy are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. This is our principle too, meaning earnestly believe that God exists, that I matter to Him, and He has the power to help me recover. Amen. And Amen. He has helped me recover. I'm, I'm a walking testimony. Amen. And so, that's all I have. Amen.